Volubilis in Morocco was once a thriving Roman city and also one of the most remote Roman cities in the entire empire. Today we visit the well-preserved ruins of Volubilis and also pay a visit to one of Morocco's imperial cities, Meknes, where we explore the old Medina and the royal quarter and try the local delicacy, camel burgers. We are Chris and Lydia, the Roving Bellies. Thanks for joining us on our Morocco adventure. This morning, we're leaving Chefchaouen and traveling south to the Moroccan imperial city of Meknes before making our way to Fez. Just wait until you see where we're staying tonight. But first, we need to bid a bittersweet farewell to the spectacular blue city of Chefchaouen. We've loved every single second we've spent in this amazing place and I'm sure we'll come back again one day. I'll provide a link to our video on Chef Chown in the description below, but for now, it's another perfect morning, so it's time to hit the road. We've loved every minute of the stay we've had here in Chef Chown, but unfortunately, it's time to pack up and leave this beautiful hotel and this beautiful town. You ready to go? <laughs> Okay, let's head on out. There's so much more to see in Morocco. After leaving Chef Chown, we made our way down through the Rift mountain range, enjoying the scenic drive alongside picturesque forests and mountain streams. Before long, we left the mountains behind and found ourselves driving past fields of wheat and olive groves. In these fertile plains between the Rift Mountains to the north and the Middle Atlas Mountains to the south, the soil is rich and the farming is good. Just to the north of Meknes are the ruins of the ancient Roman city of Volubilis. As we approached the archaeological site, the ruined arches and pillars appeared as if out of nowhere in the midst of these lush green farmlands. They seemed so out of place a thousand miles from Rome. So the tour will take like one hour, one hour and a half. We've come to the old Roman ruins of Volubilis on the fertile plains near Meknes in northern Morocco. The Romans were very smart in where they built this remote centre for the Roman Empire. It's very fertile lands around here, farming lands. I think they made their money growing olives. We have a local guide who's giving us a walking tour of the ruins. The indigenous tribes of Morocco, called the Berber or Imazean people, lived on this site from the 3rd century BC. In the year 40 AD, Morocco fell under the control of the Roman Empire during their westward expansion along the Mediterranean coastline, and Volubilis became a Roman city. It was one of Rome's most remote outposts. Volubilis was already a provincial capital before the Romans arrived, but it grew and prospered under Roman control. During the 200 plus years of Roman rule, the city more than tripled in size with 20,000 inhabitants. The city's prosperity was based around agriculture, particularly the production and export of olive oil and grains. Roman ruins in Morocco. I wasn't yeah. expecting to see that. No, it was a pretty remote outcrop, I think. This was about as far as the Roman Empire stretched. 
couldn't go any further because it reached the Atlantic Ocean. The city's inhabitants, who are mostly Romanized Berbers, built lavish homes and mansions adorned with rich mosaics, which are very well preserved and much more vibrant than I would have expected after 2000 years. They also built impressive public structures, including temples, a basilica, and a grand triumphal arch that would befit any Roman city. The main street runs through the centre of the city, leading down to the arch. In Roman times, this wide street would have been paved, with footpaths, shops and bakeries lining each side. This was the commercial heart of the city. The arch itself is the city's most iconic landmark, constructed to honour Emperor Caracalla, who granted Roman citizenship to the town's residents. Originally, the arch was crowned with a bronze statue of a chariot drawn by six horses. The archaeological excavation and restoration of Volubilis began in 1915 during the French Protectorate and continues to this day. And in 1997, Volubilis was designated a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The Basilica is the main judicial and government administration building. It's more than 42 metres long and would have had two storeys. Beside the Basilica is the Forum, which is an open public area where markets would have been held. The Forum would have been lined with statues, but now only the pedestals remain. Behind the Basilica stands a Corinthian temple elevated high on a podium with an altar in the courtyard below its 13 steps. The temple was a significant gathering place for the Romans, where people came to offer thanks to the gods or to ask for their assistance. The Roman rule of Volubilis lasted until late into the 3rd century, when its remote location made it too difficult and expensive to defend against local tribes. After spending two hours exploring Volubilis, we hopped back on our bus for a short 30 kilometer drive to Meknes. Along the way, we passed by the most sacred city in Morocco, Moulay Idris. This hilltop city is the final resting place of Idris I, a direct descendant of the Prophet Muhammad and founder of modern Morocco. It didn't take long for the sight of KFC, Pizza Hut and McDonald's to signal that we'd left the countryside and arrived in Meknes. Inhabited since the 10th century, Meknes is one of Morocco's four imperial cities that have one time or other been the historical capital of Morocco the other three being the current capital of Rabat, as well as Fez and Marrakesh. Meknes was the capital for only 55 years under Moulay Ismail when he made it his capital in 1672. After a short walk from the bus drop-off point, we entered the old Medina. We've arrived in Meknes on a public holiday, so the Medina isn't its usual bustling self, but it's well after lunchtime and I'm so hungry, I could eat a camel. We're in Meknes now, which is a former capital of Morocco. And we're going to go have lunch and um, I think I'll have a camel burger. I've never tried camel before. Unfortunately, most of the restaurants were closed for the holiday, including the one that we'd planned to have lunch at. However, the Moroccan people are warm, generous and incredibly giving. The wonderful owners of the restaurant welcomed 14 hungry Aussies into their own home and made us the specialty camel burgers that Meknes is famous for. Oh, thank you. Got it? Yes. This is the famous camel burger. Kabubi. He's eating kabubi. Mm. <laughs> Poor kabubi. <laughs> Not eating kabubi. Poor kabubi.
Right, here we go. Give us a verdict. It's a camel burger. It's camel burger. It's like camel balls. It does, yeah, it might be. It could be. Thank you. Thank you. Good. What's it taste like? Oh, yeah. It's not too It's like a lamb, I guess, a lamb mince. More lamb than beef. It's spice. It's got lots of spices in it. So, um, gamey? A little bit gamey, but it's very tasty. I really like it. Yeah. it it's not like beef at all. Okay. Mm. Yeah, it's really nice. After a very tasty lunch, we were joined by a new guide who led us around the old Medina of Meknes before showing us part of the royal palace. It's not open, the markets aren't open, but we'll see them in other places. Yeah, we're in Fez. We'll be open in Fez when we're there. But you can get the idea. Yeah. If you're from Meknes or you visited Meknes Medina when it's busy, please leave us a comment and let us know what it's like. Some of the stalls are open, at least. Nice pair of pencil in the wine. The working fountain. Very decorative fountains, aren't they, honey? I think we need a fountain at home. Little <laughs> kitten. Yeah. I'm gonna fly him. Such a cute. During his reign, Sultan Ismail built an expansive new palace, along with mosques, fortifications and monumental gates. The palace was so vast that it dwarfed the entire old city, earning Meknes the nickname The Sai of Morocco. The construction project spanned all 55 years of his rule. After Sultan Ismail's death, the capital was moved back to Fez, while Meknes fell into disrepair. This is El Hadim Square, a public open space separating the former royal palace on one side and the old Medina on the other. El Hadim means the rubble, named after a pile of debris that was stacked here during the demolition of the old medieval Kasbah in the 18th century to make way for the Sultan's new palace. During the 20th century, when Meknes was under French control, the French constructed a new town outside of the old Medina. As the new city expanded, the old part fell into neglect. In recent years, however, restoration projects have started. Unfortunately for us, this means that many areas of the Royal Palace are currently closed to the public. Still, we can explore some sections of the palace, and I'm sure that once the city is fully restored, it will be incredible. We're entering the Royal Quarter now. Yeah. Normally we talk about the finance, we talk about the food and the smell. 
This is the final resting place of the Sultan, Mulay Ismail. There's a crane making a nest up on the corner. There's a pair of storks in this one. So this is the Royal Quarter lid. That looks like a nice little chill out area on the top of that building up there. Bye bye, Mechanics. After our walk through the royal quarter of Meknes, it was getting late in the day and we still had an hour left to drive until we reached Fez. As we arrived in Fez with the sun setting, we look forward to seeing our Riyadh accommodation. Could it possibly live up to our hotel in Chefchaouen? Absolutely! Oh wow! Look at this! It's a full place to bed! Oh my goodness! This is... Put the bag yeah. down. Exactly. Oh, you got a bath, Lydia. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's the toot. Look at the bed. Look at the bed. It's a four posted bed. And this is a proper riad because let's have a look. Here's the courtyard down below. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I'm speechless. I and I'm lost for words. I don't know what to say. I did not expect this. This is just out Look at the ceilings. Look at these beautiful carpets. The timber. The look at the timber ceilings, like the carvings on that and that light. The arch, and the archway and the carvings in the. That's all carved up here. I know. That's not wallpaper. That's all hand carved. Yeah. It's incredible. Oh, I feel like a king yeah, living in here. Like Is this a Riyadh's for the rich and famous? Wow. We'll show you more of our Riyadh and a lot more of Fez in our next episode. So if you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe so you don't miss out on any of our Morocco adventure. We've so much more to come and we hope you'll come roving with us then. Bye for now.